Hey guys, Sarah here. Today I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful faux marble coat rack using an old cabinet door I picked up. So stick around and watch how the magic happens. So I'm starting out with this, it's either a skinny cabinet door or a drawer front, and I managed to pick this up at my ReStore, and I was lucky enough to get one that had never been used before somehow. I didn't have to fill any holes in it. Um, there has never been any drawer pulls or any hardware of any sort installed on this cabinet door. So I'm not sure how I got so lucky, but this is what I'm starting with. Now the first thing you want to do, whether it's a brand new cabinet door like this was or an old one, is you want to clean it. And I'm using this TSP substitute, and I'll leave you the link below. And I'm going to just spray it onto my cabinet door, and then I'm going to rub it down really well using a soft, clean cloth. And this will just ensure that any grime or grease or dirt that's been on here uh, is completely cleaned off so it does not affect your paint job. Now that my cabinet door is clean and dry, I'm going to move on to the next step. And what that is, is this liquid sandpaper. This is a great product if you don't want to sand down your item that you're going to be working with. What it will do is degloss and etch into any finish that is on the surface of the wood. So it's a great alternative to sanding if you don't have any sandpaper or the time or just don't want the dust. Now this stuff is extremely easy to use. All you have to do is give it a good shake and then using a terry cloth rag um, is what I use. They want you to use a textured rag. You just saturate the rag and then wipe it down on the surface, making sure that your rag is well saturated at all times so that the chemical can work its way into the wood. Now, it's probably a good idea when you do this to wear rubber gloves I did not. I didn't even think about it. It really does not affect my hands at all, but if you have sensitive skin, it may cause an issue. I use this without gloves quite often, but you do want to make sure you wash your hands when you're done. Now that the liquid sandpaper has completely dried, I'm going to go ahead and start painting. And for this project, I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in ink. And I am going to paint one coat over the entire surface of my cabinet door. And after that dries completely, I'm going to go back over the outside raised edges of the cabinet door and give them a second coat. And the reason I'm only giving one coat on the inside is that I just want it to be a solid dark color before we move on to the next step. And as I'm painting, I am going to use these um, little, little drink cups I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to raise the cabinet door up off of the table so that I can get around and I don't have any paint pulling along the outside edges. Now, I know I said that the deglosser would prevent sanding, but I am going to go back on that statement and I am going to give a light sanding to the paint now that I've have it painted and the paint is dry. I did two coats on the outside and just a single coat in the middle as I said and what the sandpaper is going to do it's just a very light sanding any um, brush marks that are on there it's going to help smooth out those brush marks and just give it a nice smooth finish before I move on to the next step. Now here you can see around the outside edges, I was very careful with how I sanded. I was more aggressive in the center because I did want to go ahead and make sure there was a little bit of grip there for the next step, which will be this photorealistic marble contact paper I picked up on Amazon. It's a dark color. I absolutely love it. It's dramatic. And this is going to add such a statement to the center of this drawer piece. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut it, 
cutting just a little extra around all the outside edges so that we will have a little bit to work with once we move on to the next step. Now I have my piece of vinyl cut down to the size that I need and what I'm going to do is just pull back this very edge of the contact paper and then I'm going to fold back the paper backing and line it up very carefully with the narrow straight edge of the cabinet door and push that down and then I'm going to very carefully start working this out slowly pulling the backing out as I go and just making sure that there are no bubbles and here I'm just using a plastic squeegee that I had and I'm just pushing it down and I'm going right down the center right now with the squeegee I'm not worried about the edges I just want to make sure that it's laid out all the way along the center that there's no bumps or air pockets in the center as I work and if you see me pulling it back just a little bit that's because a little bit of uh, something got underneath I'm just pulling those little bits out I think I ran into one or two and just very carefully and slowly working this paper all the way down to the edges once I have the contact paper placed all the way down from end to end I'm going in and very carefully starting to butt up the edges again very gentle pressure I'm not pushing them in real hard right now but I want to start making sure those air bubbles are worked out and then I'm getting this contact paper all the way out to the edges once I have it all the way down uh, with the gentle tapping motion and it's almost all the way to the edges I'm going to go back in I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive so that it is creased and it is ready to cut now that all those edges are pushed up and creased completely along the edges of the raised portion of the cabinet door, I'm going to go ahead and get an X-Acto knife and I'm going to start cutting. But before I do, you can see right here at the edges where I need to cut very carefully diagonally up along this contact paper so that it will lay smooth on this short edge here and it's just a simple matter of carefully cutting a diagonal line all the way down um, to the bottom layer of the contact paper carefully pushing those back in so they are laid completely flat set at just as the rest of the contact paper is and then it's simply a matter of taking that same exacto knife and running it carefully all along those creases and I'm going to be working very carefully and slowly here and the exacto knife actually fits just under those two pieces of wood so as long as I use gentle pressure and move very slowly I know I'm going to have the perfect edge and you can see here as I peel it back a little bit as I go just how perfect it looks as I pull that excess away Now that I have the contact paper cut down and we are ready to move on to the next step, we're going to flip the cabinet door over. The next step takes place on the back side. Now I went ahead and painted the back because I wanted it to have the finished look as well as the front. If I didn't paint it, you would see the, um, I believe it was cherry, you would see the cherry color on it. Um, you would see any places where the paint came over the back edge it just would not have a nice professional finish look but what we are going to do now is take a hot glue gun and in this inset area here we are going to squeeze a thick bead of hot glue slowly along all these inside edges now we want to be sure that there's no air pockets and that it is completely sealed before we move on to the next step Now that we have our glue completely across the back and it is dry, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over on the front side 
Now, when I do this, I always say a little prayer that there are no small holes in the back that I've overlooked, because if there are the resin that we are now going to pour over the front, over our contact paper to give it that shine and that deep look that marble actually has, um, this resin will seep through. It will find those holes, even if they're small, and it will run through and make a mess. So you always want to be sure when working with resin that you have your surface correctly prepped and covered and that in case the resin does leak through or spill out, you won't damage or ruin your tabletop. So now I'm just pouring the resin all the way along the center here. I've mixed up four ounces of the resin and I'm hoping this will be enough at this point and scraping out all the excess. Now that I have the resin completely poured into the cabinet door, I'm going to move it around and make sure that it meets up to all of the edges and all of the corners so that once it sets up and dries, we won't see any areas where it did not actually meet up and it will ruin the appearance of what we are trying for, which is this glass-like effect. Now, resin self-levels, so I'm not really worried about um, any, any waves or dents I'm making in the resin right now. Um, those will level out, especially after we hit it with the heat gun to remove any air bubbles. Now that I have the resin all completely covering, I am going to hit it with the heat gun. And while you can't really see the air bubbles before I can start hitting it, you could see the motion where they were popping right up there at the edge. You can see the, the little sparkles where those air bubbles are actually hitting. The heat is actually popping those bubbles. And you don't want to hold your heat gun in any one place because you can actually damage your resin. The heat will cure it very quickly. You could end up with some scorched resin, but you do want to go back and forth and try to get those bubbles out. As you can see, I'm constantly moving back and forth so that that heat is not hitting any one place for more than a second. Now, depending on the brand of resin that you're using, it can take anywhere from several hours to a full day to cure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cover this so that no dust or debris or anything gets onto the resin and I'm going to let it sit up and I'm just going to leave it overnight and I'll be back tomorrow morning to check on this. All right, now that this is set up overnight, we're going to go ahead and take these off and the resin is hardened. Doesn't that look amazing? I love that glassy shine that it has now. It makes all the difference in the world. 
Now it's time to figure out the placement of the coat hooks. I picked some up on Amazon that I absolutely love and I think they'll be perfect for this project. I'm going to go ahead and get these out. Aren't those amazing? So I'm going to go ahead. I have four of them, so I'm going to figure out exactly where I want the two outside hooks to be placed. And then I am going to go ahead and measure for the inside too so that everything is centered. I figured out the placement for my coat hooks and I went ahead and went out into the garage and drilled the four holes I needed for these hooks. However, before I place the hooks, I want to place a protective coating over the outside of the painted portion of the frame. Now, a lot of times I will use this clear sealing wax that I just showed you on furniture, but because this coat rack will have things rubbing up against it and bumping up against it, I'm going to use polycrylic and I'm going to go ahead and use the clear matte so it doesn't add a lot of shine to the chalk paint because that is the look I wanted to offset the sheen from the resin. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do two coats of the polycrylic on the front and the back. And once this is dry, I'm going to go ahead and start putting these hooks in place. Now it's time to place the hooks into our coat rack. Now, because these are not cabinet knobs, they come with a little bit different hardware, which has the finer threads on the one side, which you screw into the hook itself. Now, these also came with some plastic wall anchors in case you wanted to place them directly into the wall. But since we're placing them in a cabinet door, we are going to screw these directly into the wood itself. And because this is a very hard wood, it will hold up well. So now I'm just going to go ahead and start screwing these in. And this does take a little bit of elbow grease once you get them going. They are not real easy to get all the way in, which is great because it also proves that they will hold up to the wear and tear that a coat rack will have. Now, the last thing that I did was I placed two of these large sawtooth hangers on the back of the coat rack. And you will notice in the final shots of the coat rack, you can see a little bit of wire that it is hanging from. This is because this coat rack is a gift and I didn't have any place to hang this on my wall without adding additional nail holes. So I went ahead and temporarily placed a wire between the two um, sawtooth hangers so that I could hang it for some final pictures. I was hoping that that wire would not show, but it stretched just enough from the weight that it did appear above the top of the coat rack. All right, so that is it. That is my faux marble coat rack that I made from an old cabinet door I picked up at Restore. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope this gives you lots of ideas. Um, let me know in the comments below what your ideas are that you can use old cabinet doors for. And I hope I really opened up some great thought processes for you. Have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.